Hey, this is Yucky Chucky from the Ball Out Gamer Cast. Before we get into today's very romantic episode, we just like to give you a big thank you for listening. We do this for the internet weirdos, the gamers gone wild, and the trolls typing away on their keyboards in mom's basement. So thank you for tuning in, and let's get into it. Replaygoblin.com and tomorrow's ballers. ballers welcome you to the following presentation of the Ball Out GamerCast. Broadcasting live from an alien mothership. It's the alien anal bro. Pasadena, California. With your hosts, Drizzle and Yucky Chucky. Welcome to the Ball Out Gamer Cast. I'm Yucky Chucky, and this is my co-host Thrizzle. Yeah. You know what? Today, you know who I'm doing it for? Oh. The Gamer's Gone Wild. Uh Uh-huh. Can you imagine that? No way. There's freaky gamer girls, right? Oh, are you kidding? (laughs) No. No, I don't know how they look. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you, you hear them over the mic? You hear them over the mic. You know what's funny about that is, you know, sometimes you get a pleasant surprise. You know, everybody's like... Gamer girls get it tough though on the real because oh yeah everybody expect like you know everybody gets so hype on the mic when a girl comes on <laughs> like you hear it in everybody's voice like everybody we talk yeah man fuck you you're an asshole blah blah and then you and then somebody goes uh <laughs> like a little giggle or something and everybody yeah. gets quiet what what the fuck was that <laughs> like is what? that a Girl? Oh, is that are we are we playing with a girl? Oh shit. And girl, it's girl, over. you guys, girl. 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 Oh girl. my god, girl alert. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking over, man. So uh yeah, no, there's definitely gamer girls out there, you know, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always it's gamer always girls gone wild. Gamer girls gone wild. Hey, that should be that new. should be a thing. That's our new venture. Yeah. Hey, uh venture capitalists out yeah. there. TM trademark. Gamer girls <laughs> gamer gone wild. Gamer girls gone wild. <laughs> man, so okay, before before we I'd like to expand upon this this topic, but first, uh, can we jump into a voicemail real quick? What oh, yeah, do let's do that. All right, I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm getting turned right now. I just want to talk about we, go- we Golf. We Golf It's great. Hmm. Great game of golf. Great golf simulation. You know, I play with my brother a lot. Sounds like, fun. The, uh, the par fours. <laughs> Sometimes par five. Par threes are a little rough. 18th hole can be... Can be quite devastating. It's in the uh, it's in the water primarily, but I just think you guys should talk about Wii Golf a lot. I love games. <laughs> I love games like backgammon, Chinese <laughs> checkers, and uh, shoot some ladders, and uh, you know fucking Dungeons and Dragons and shit. Bye bye. Well, okay. So so to answer his question, I mean I'd be happy to talk about Wii Golf. You know. Uh, I did have a Wii at one point a long time ago, and I played Wii Sports. It's fun. That is really tight. I, yeah. I played the baseball, though, mostly in tennis. I, I played a little bit of the Wii Golf. Um, I did not play Wii Golf. I hate to say it. I've never been into golf games. The only, You know what? The only golf game I played a lot was uh, uh, Kirby. Kirby's oh, golf course. That game is uh, tight. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That hey, was look, everyone sick. listening, I'm going to give you a tip real quick. <laughs> um. It's not that helpful because I don't re- remember the exact website, but maybe you can just look up this search phrase. I found um, browse- browser-based games that are – it has an entire library of Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis games that you can play through your browser. But check it out. It has networking on available so you can play online against people. Oh. I played that Kirby game on my computer against a friend like a couple months ago. No. I forget if I I'll find the websites and maybe put them in the episode description on the website. Yeah, you got to. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and look up um, like SNES browser games multiplayer or something like that. That and is, I promise you can play these old games on your computer against friends. That is amazing, man. You know, you know what's funny? I actually saw those ads pop up before when I'm on websites and gaming sites and stuff like that. Yeah, and I just figured, them. yeah, exactly. I just figured it probably didn't even work. It probably looks like it's probably going to be all like busted characters like that don't even look like it's going to be like some other kind of looking Mario like with no mustache or something like, <laughs> right. you know, like I thought it was going to be something weird like that. But now that you say that, man, I'm going to try that immediately. It's super weird to play these games that were never intended to be played online. <laughs> online. That's it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. I played so many. Man, you name it. I probably played it. 
Oh man, I I'm, went on a binge. Yeah, I'm going straight to Sonic Two and racing people with Sonic <laughs> and Tails. That's that the, was man. the only thing is you have to invite somebody, so you, there's not like random lobbies or anything. Oh, there's no random lobbies. No, you have to like you have to, you have to like like be like, hey man, you want to play me in some Sonic? And I'll be like, yeah, and then you send me the link and we just link okay, up and play. okay, that's then that's what we'll do. Yeah, man, they need random lobbies though, man. That just I mean that would probably actually help them a lot. More people would play, probably play that, no question. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, you know what's <laughs> funny? They have a chat. They have a like a chat room like chat lobbies too oh okay. so you can you can find people to play with through the chat thing oh that works yeah that's probably what so, they expect you to do then too also yeah it's really weird that's its own little like weird underground thing i should probably investigate it a little more yeah so okay so going back to something we were discussing earlier hmm. the gamer girls kind of along the themes of uh love i can't not mention that yesterday was valentine's day ah uh, yes the day of love and and, or, ha and hating love. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now we're talking. No. Um, how was your Valentine's Day, Thrizzle? It was actually pretty good, man. I, I, you know, just went out to eat and stuff like that. But I did go see that Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, no shit. I did go see that. On Valentine's Day. Uh, yes, yes. It was pretty good, though. I'm not, it was I'm a not good movie? Lie. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It was pretty good. I did. I fell asleep a little bit uh, at the end. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. Just off some, you know, but off, you know, it's because they started talking. So mm -hmm. take what I say from that. <laughs> they start, you know, it was a lot of uh, other stuff going on in that movie besides talking, but uh, it was pretty cool, though. It was pretty, I, I liked it. So I, I, I liked it more than I thought I was going to like it. I thought I was going to just totally hate it almost. So you're saying there were some racy scenes in this movie? Oh, man. Yeah, De <laughs> definitely. I'll put it this way. When I fell asleep, the reason why I woke up is because one of the characters got hit with, like, a whip <laughs> object, like, real hard. And that's when I, oh, what the fuck was that? So, yeah, that was when I woke up. <laughs> it was pretty good. I like that movie. I have, I have to admit, hmm. when... Okay, so I saw on Facebook that you had posted that you were about to see it. So I already knew, I already knew you saw it. Yeah. But I was worried because... I didn't see any posts after that, and I was worried that maybe you were, like, tied up with, like, a gag in your mouth or, like, you know, like, unconscious with a bag over your head. I didn't know, I didn't know if, like, your girl got any crazy ideas from watching that. She, like, she just choked me to death and yeah. just, like, left me in I was really worried about you. Left me to room somewhere, man. Oh, yeah. man. I, I could only hope, but no. Uh, <laughs> I can only hope I go, that, I go that way. No, uh, no, I just, uh, you know, just, you know, Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh shit well that's cool it sounds like it sounds like your girl had a good a good time too she enjoyed the movie yeah it was yeah she, oh she was loving it cause she uh, I got her the books and stuff for her oh so she was that. ready to go oh she was loving yeah what the whole time she was oh that was in the movie that was in the movie that was in the book that was in the book so. I, I saw a thread on reddit actually Up, it was asking people who work in movie theaters what's the weirdest things you've seen at the Fifty Shades of Grey premiere and, you know, actually, a lot of them didn't have that crazy stories. But surprisingly, said a lot of the people who were acting rowdy were, like, middle-aged women. Yeah, I believe that. Super horny middle-aged women. I totally believe Were that. offering to, like, blow the guys who take the tickets. <laughs> oh, and, like, no, that yeah. didn't really happen. Are you serious? Yeah. But, wow. Well, that's what they say. I don't know. That's what the people who said they were at the movie theater say. <laughs> that is, that is uh, wow. That's well, they're also getting drunk a lot. They're finding lots of empty booze bottles in the theater as well. Wow. You know, I mean, but you know what? Being single on Valentine's Day, you go go somewhere outside where uh, they're showing Fifty Shades of Grey, man. You could have picked up a date probably afterwards because there was plenty of I, there was a lot of single girls in there too, like groups of girls, right. and just girls by themselves. Like there was a lot of that going on too. So we had to hung out around the theater long enough outside. Psh, I was just able to do that when you said when you if you hung out outside the theater for long enough. I was just picturing myself in like a classic like <laughs> like burglar beanie <laughs> and like dark <laughs> raccoon paint over my face you look like the, hiding uh, in the bushes like, you look like the dude from the neighborhood watch <laughs> <Yeah>. signs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man i want to see a i want to see a 50 shades of gray uh, multiplayer video game i want to see that come out soon real soon well as we've said in episode two there's a lot you could just have sex in second life i'm sure they have sex dungeons you know what you pretty much you know what in second life you could pretty much live like you could probably live like that, like like Gray. You could probably live like that dude. Oh, is Gray the main character? Yeah, name? dude's name is Christian Gray. I was yeah. like, oh wow, okay. So yeah. how does he get chicks? What's his strategy? Get he doesn't. <laughs> that's a, oh well, not to spoil the movie, but yeah, don't you don't have to. You can do it a spoiler free way, but overall, what's this guy's vibe that he's getting so many chicks to come to his dungeon? Oh, he's just you know he's just, he just well first of all he's like a billionaire. Oh, that Mill helps. Millionaire, billionaire, so that definitely helps a lot. 
And uh, it's not that he gets females like that. It's just like the female that he does gets has to like uh, be like totally give herself to him in every way. Submissive. You got it. That's the exact word. That's the word. That's the exact word yep. that it is. <laughs> so, you, so you, do you feel like you have a better understanding of bondage now a little bit? Well, Where did you always know about your bondage? <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now, if you're a, a uh, if you, you know what I'm saying, if you're really into that shit, this movie is not going to surprise you at all. Uh, but you know, I mean, I mean, you know, it's 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 not it's not anything you don't know unless you're like a super prude or whatever. I guess mm-hmm. that's why I think that's why maybe it was like a lot of middle aged women because middle aged women don't look at hardcore internet porn probably. Yeah, <laughs> and they don't know what the fuck they're missing out yeah. on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that has something to do with it. We might as well just make this a little bit of a more emotional, uh. Love filled Valentine's Day late episode. We've already discussed bondage and and um fifty shades of gray. Let's let's bring some video games in this for once in our lives though. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever played a video game that like actually makes you feel feelings, like true emotion? Of course I have. Okay. Definitely. So like what 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 game has brought out emotion in you? Bro. Final Fantasy Seven, Ares' death scene. Man, I get mad just thinking about that right now. Like, so that that was a cold. That was the music, the the way it happened, who she was to the main character, Cloud. It was just, it was ridiculous. For for those people who haven't played it or don't know what you're talking about, what about that scene made you feel like well, first, true sadness? Well, first of all, that was like uh, the whole through most of the game, Cloud is like struggling between these two girls, and but he's kind of pretty much leaning toward this girl in particular. Mm-hmm. And she gets, uh, she ends up going up missing. Uh, and, you know, they're looking all over for her for this, you know, they're going all over this long adventure. And you finally find her. Like, you go through a disc. Remember when uh, it was a PlayStation game, it was like four oh, discs yeah. long. So oh, you're like yeah. going through like a whole disc, not, you know, looking for this girl. Mm-hmm. And you get, you finally find her. And this is when cinema scenes were, you know, the shit because this all the cinema scenes had like more graphics and stuff. Uh, you know, cut to a cinema scene, you find her, and bam, Sephiroth, which is, by the way, my most favorite villain, uh, video game villain of all time, and I'm just, so many people love Sephiroth, comes down and just, and just ends it, man, and it's like, all, you're like, all that, and, and just the, the music that plays, and it, Mm -hmm. and it meant so much to the backstory, because she was supposed to kind of save the whole world, Sephiroth's basically about to destroy the world, and she was kind of the one who could save it, he kills her, so it's kind of like, well, so, we're fucked then. And right. on top of that, this dude lost the girl that he loved, and Sephiroth, you're an asshole, and it was just, it's just, it was great, though. It was a great moment in video game history, in my opinion. I wish I had that, uh, see, I, I skip cutscenes. Oh, I God. don't follow the storyline, so I have to, for, I have to get emotional in my own way. Okay. But I do have a game that brought out true, pure emotion in me. Okay. And, like, maybe not the emotion... That most people would expect, it was actually more like fear and like anxiety and like, but also like triumph. And okay, I'll just explain. Mm. So for a while, I was playing Daisy, and for those who don't know about Daisy, it's it's a survival game. It's basically you're in this gigantic, and when I say gigantic, I mean huge open world where there's zombies and other humans. You don't really have to worry about the zombies. It's the other humans you got to watch because you have to you have to feed yourself. You have to have things to drink. You have to bandage yourself. You you know you have to do all these things to stay alive. Your everything is constantly working against you for you to die. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is there's limited resources in this world. There's barely any guns to be found. There's there's barely any food. There's barely any medical equipment. Anywhere you will find it is in very common areas on the map where other people are usually going to be trying to get the resources too. So what you really have to watch out is for humans, because people in that game, they kill you for no other reason than to look what's in your backpack. Oh, man. They want to live another day longer than you, and that's it. Wow. And sometimes you'll find people who are your friends, and sometimes, most of the time, you won't. Mm-hmm. So the the one experience I had that t- felt just, like, totally, like, surreal and, like, exciting and scary and all this stuff was when I got kidnapped. And I know that sounds funny. Okay. But I truly got kidnapped in DayZ. Wow. Um, what had happened was these guys drove up in a, a police car. You know, there's no police. It's like an apocalyptic kind of world. So they just had oh, like so an old police car. Ass. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
and I got this bright idea. Like, I had a gun for once in my life, and it's like a pistol with, like, seven bullets. And by the way, you're doing pretty good in the game if you have that. Like, you'll probably <laughs> have to drop on a lot of people. It's right. Like, so... I have this idea I'm going to empty my magazine into the driver's side seat and I'm going to kill this driver and get a car for me and my friend. Bow, 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 um, bow. So I emptied the, the magazine and I guess none of the bullets hit her. So the game is so realistic, it's actually hard to... One bullet will kill someone that hits them in the perfect spot, but it's hard to get that perfect shot, you know? Like, okay. So I guess I didn't kill him. And... Um, he just stayed in front of me, like, in his car and I thought they were going to get out and kill me. There was two guys in the car. And I... Went up to the car and, and I asked him, I didn't ask them anything. They just told me, like, get in. So I was like, okay, can we pick up my friend? And they said, yeah. So I got in. And then as soon as I said my friends are on the corner, they took off. <laughs> <laughs> and they started driving really fast. And then I said, where's my friend? And they just typed back, your friend's dead. And I was like, oh, shit. I was oh, like, wow. I was, like, I was like, I didn't know for a fact if he was dead or not. I was like, what the fuck? So anyway, they drove me to a body and it wasn't his. And I said, all right, I'm just going to get out now. And then they said, no, you're not. And they sped up again. The thing is, if you try to jump out of the car, Daisy is so real that you'll die from jumping out of the car. <laughs> you'll break your legs and bleed out to death. For oh, sure. Oh, nice. Okay. So anyway, uh, they drove along the road until there was two other cop cars that were crashed in the middle of the road that blocked us off. And the crazy shit, as soon as they stopped to try to back up, I hopped out. And then, bra, 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 gunshots everywhere. <laughs> and people were killed. These guys ju jumped out and killed them. It was like an ambush. They set up their cars to block the road and then killed the guys who kidnapped me. Jeez. And then I hopped out and stole, and stole a car that was blocking us and took off down the road and survived. And that whole time, the reason I say that made me feel emotion was the whole time I was feeling like actual feelings of all of this happening. Like, how do I get out of here? How do I stay alive? How do I, what's going to happen to me? Are they just going to take me to a field and kill me? <laughs> and you know, there's no real consequences, but it's the only game that's ever been that immersive to me to actually make me feel feelings like that. You know, it's that, it's that feeling of having the, uh, the no resources and being so fragile. Like, you know, you play a game like, well, besides games like Halo and, you know, all these other games where you got like so many bullets round after round and, you know, like even Grand Theft Auto, you know what I'm saying? You got like this many bullets round after round, getting away from cars, ducking down. Whereas it goes from that to super realism where one pistol shot mm -hmm. can take you out. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And and it's so hard to find that one bullet and think and you're fighting with like a stick or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like I think that's just what it is. That's crazy though. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I guess it's funny though, we both we both have very different experiences when it comes to uh, memories of games that have actually made us have feelings and emotion and that kind of stuff. So I always think that kind of stuff is kind of cool to talk about, right? I like the psychology of gaming. Yeah, definitely. So I think let's take a break real quick. And when we come back, I want to continue our discussion on gamer love. Okay. I have some thoughts on it. I think you do too. All right. We'll be right back. This edition of the Ball Out Gamer Cast is sponsored by dinosaurs. All of them. T-Rexes. Pterodactyls. Woolly mammoths, and that's it. Just kidding, raptors. So go get a book about dinosaurs and learn about them. All right, welcome back. Thrizzle, did you enjoy your luxurious break? Oh, I did. I'm feeling real nice. What did you do? Oh, well, you know, I just uh, kicked back and listened to some uh, Kenny G. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. I didn't catch. Oh, you had it in your headphones. Yeah, man. You know, you know, I did. I did on the low. You know, I didn't want you to laugh at me like you just did. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thanks. Man. Appreciate I'm it. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So going back to the whole like uh, nerdy gamer dating kind of stuff. Yeah. I was watching this show called Geek Love. Have you heard of this? Oh I, no, I have not actually. Okay. So Geek Love is a show where basically they throw speed dating events at Comic Con and other kinds of conventions and stuff. Okay. And, you know, it's pretty cool. It's kind of fun to watch people dressed up as all kinds of different things, uh, meeting each other and, like, looking for different shit. Like, one girl who loves Wookiees was looking for another guy who's, like, a Wookiee. Can you do a Wookiee sound, a Chewbacca sound? 
Wow, that's pretty good, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> that first one was better, but that was good. <laughs> the first one's better. I got it. Got it. Got yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. I swear, I've always wanted. I can't fart using my armpit either. Oh man, that was that's that was now that's an early grade technique right there. Yeah, I never could do that. Either. Oh man, you got to go back and master that one. Come on now. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> so I was watching the show, and the the only funny thing I noticed that in my the episode I watched that was pretty funny was the dude who was cosplaying was the character he dresses up at when he goes to conventions is like basically like Superman's or Clark Kent's like f- f- apprentice or something like a photographer from the do you know what I'm talking about? Jimmy oh, something? Jim- Why would you dress up as Jimmy, bro? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, never even heard of him. That's He dresses up as Superman's like apprentice who's like, is he ever even no, in the comic books or shows or no, anything? No, he's not. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, he's not Superman's apprentice. He's like more like Lois Lane's apprentice, bro. <laughs> Why would you dress up as that Wait, guy? So he's like Lois Lane's intern? Yeah, yeah. So like he like, yeah. well, he t- no, he's a photographer. Oh, okay. So Lois Lane, you know, she she reports and shit, and he's like the photographer. Oh, okay. She ta- he I takes the you. pictures. So he has a little bit of a spot. Uh, yeah, I guess if you want to call it that. I mean, that's hilarious. Yeah, the guy is weird. He was like, he was very upset when people didn't know who he was supposed to be. Well, yeah, damn. What <laughs> What do you expect? What are you into? Big Superman fan. Do you know who Jimmy Olsen is? No. You don't know who Jimmy Olsen is? Oh, jeez. <laughs> You just strike out if you don't know who I am. Okay. Well, do you know who I am? Yeah. Do you know Jimmy Olsen? Oh, okay. <laughs> do you know who that is? No. You don't know Jimmy Olsen? No, I'm sorry. Take a wild guess. He's somebody's pal. He is a big superhero's good friend. He wears a red cape. He's really strong. Red tornado. What? Red tornado. <laughs> who the hell is that? What the hell is going on? Really, it's a joke. You got, this is all that's got to be a joke. You don't know who Jimmy Olsen is? No. Come on. You know who Superman is, right? Yeah, I know who Superman is. You know Lois Lane? Oh, so the other guy. The one that no one ever talks about. That's not funny at all. (laughs) I don't know. I thought that show was funny. That's hilarious, actually. But you know, there's there's so... There's kind... He didn't... I don't want no spoiler alerts, but he didn't... Who's going to watch the show? It's it's like an online thing at this point. It's not even on TV anymore. Right. Yeah, he he was really cocky, but it didn't really work out for him. I kind of giggled. Yeah, I mean, well, he, you have no right being cocky if you choose to be Jimmy, man. <laughs> just why didn't he just go for Superman? Why did he choose Jimmy? I, I understand you're trying to be different, so choose like I don't know, man, Lex Luthor, anything. You know what I'm saying? Do something like why you gotta choose? Just be Kryptonite. Just <laughs> <laughs> like just be Kryptonite. Be walking around in a giant green <laughs> crystal suit would have been meant would have been more threatening than Jimmy. <laughs> J- J- Jimmy's not meant to be threatening, though, is he? No, not at all. Yeah, he's no. just. Definitely not. I just feel like he's not... I don't know. I understand doing what's, like, what you're into and what you like, but I don't understand being offended when people don't get it. He's like, come on. <laughs> you nincompoop. you never seen Jimmy before. <laughs> That's awesome. I love the confidence, though. The yeah. confidence about, about such a, a low-tier character. That's awesome. I've always called that like the shittiness to cockiness ratio. Yes, and it's like it's like a skew in a lot of people. Yeah, that's a that's a new number right there. <laughs> that's new. So what do you have to say, man? What do you have to say to these geeks looking for love? Maybe I'm one of them. Well, man, you know, uh, you, as you know, I love Sonic games. Fuck yeah, Sonic. You know, Sega. There's the Green Hill Zone. Sega. You know what I'm saying? There's uh, you know, all, all those zones, those nice zones that we love, but. Uh, there's one zone that So wait, there's Green Hill Zone, there's Spring Zone, Spring there's like zone, Emerald Zone. Emerald They're zone. all zones. Yeah. Every level's a zone. You got it. Yeah. But you know what Sonic doesn't fuck with? Huh. The friend zone. <laughs> no, not Sonic the Hedgehog. He does not fuck with that. None of these big time players do. They don't, man. But uh, you know, it, it's funny, like the friend zone is a it's a it's a fucked up thing, man. Uh, have you ever have you ever been friend zone before? Yeah, but okay, let me give a disclaimer. I no longer believe in the friend zone because now I understand what it is. What it's, is it? The friend zone's a it's a um, it's a mismatch of expectations. That's all it is. It's one person wanting something that the other person doesn't really want or can't give. Yeah, and you want it to be different. But you know, so I don't believe in like the whole thing. I think a big concept of the friend zone is like you're just like pushed out and like under other circumstances you might be a good match and you're just gonna like wait it out and blah 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 and i'm like no it's like there's just not to me the friend zone means basically just not any initial chemistry and like 
you know, it's just a mismatch of what you want versus what they want. But everyone goes through it. Yeah, everything. Everybody, what? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Don't get definitely. me wrong. I know what that's about. Yes. But what did you have to say about it? Well, I'm just saying, you know, there's a there's actually things you can do to to work with you the friend zone. Don't. You have a you have a technique to escape the friend zone? I wouldn't say escape, but it'll help you deal with it a lot better. You have a coping mechanism for the friend zone. Oh yeah, definitely. Well okay. there's a few things actually, you know. I mean, first of all All right. I know this is going to sound weird, but, you know, I mean, well, it's actually it's not going to sound weird as you think. But, you know, when you're really into someone and they're not feeling you back. Oh, so, yeah. Sometimes you just need to back off. Yes. Like, that's number one. Just, yo, just back off. You know what I'm saying? Find something else to do. Like, she'll notice that you're not, you know what I'm saying, on her bumper as much. And, you know what I'm saying? She'll immediately, you'll be surprised. Like, she might start calling you up. And shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. You don't like, know what you got till it's gone. Exactly. Okay, so tip number one. If you're if you're definitely known that you're locked in the friend zone, immediately slow it up a little bit. Slow it up. There's no problem Backtrack, with that. You're not, you have nothing to lose, trust no. me. <laughs> and then uh, the second thing is uh you can actually use her to, you know, your advantage. If you already know, because you know, nothing's worse than like knowing for sure. Well, what what's worse? Her telling you that you're in the friend zone or <laughs> or, or 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 you know what I'm saying like really letting you know like oh I just you know only see you as a friend or uh-huh. her kind of like acting like there might be something there but not really type the thing. second thing is far more cruel that's more like it's like far villain more cruel like, you're like a fucking you know villain why? at that point it's better to just be put out of your misery and just you know what it'd be cool you know you said does she ever just tell you you're in the friend zone I've never heard it explicitly told like that I've been told like just friends yeah of course but it'd be cool but if you said hey buddy hey buddy you're in the friend zone she might I would as love well, to hear that shit she might as well put you say I'm putting you right in the friend zone you hear that you want to put me in the friend zone you call 323-795-8125 <laughs> and you tell me I'm in the friend zone <laughs> so you want to always make that clear you know you may, like let no, her know rather... I say let her know how you feel so she lets you know what she's going to do. And and from there, you can actually use that to your advantage. Okay, so how do you use it to your advantage? Well, because once she says, oh, I just see you as a friend. Okay, well, guess what? That's cool. I wouldn't say, you know, just immediately just start, like, you know, getting at her other friends. Because, you know, that's not necessary. You don't want to do that because then yeah. you'll get shut down completely. So, but be fr- just be friendly. Wait a minute. Actually, be her Be friend? her friend? Yes. Be uh, her friend? I don't get it. Wait a minute. Believe it yeah. or not, being huh? friends with a girl has mad advantages. She can t- she also, can give you hints on, you know what I'm saying, how to, how to get more girls, more than right. anybody, more than any dude. And not only that, but I want to say something, just to say something clear. You know, girls are actually cool fucking people, too. Like, it's you could actually be friends with girls and guys. You know, you don't have to put these things on it like, oh, well, she doesn't, she doesn't want to fuck me. I don't fuck her. I don't need her in my life. <laughs> don't be a little bitter, but her guy. You should have a lot of friends. Yeah, That's you can't. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. But you so don't want to. You don't want to be like a you know a, a pushover either. No, you don't want to be like. No, dr- I'm driving not saying. Her yeah, <laughs> you don't want to be going and getting your nails done and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you know, uh-huh. you could actually just like kick it with people that are girls and they could be friends and introduce you to their friends. Yeah. So actually, don't be afraid to be a friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And especially if, and she, already, if she already put now this yeah. is she already put you there of course. if she gave you some kind of hint to let you know that she liked you now be nice to her at all costs of course but yeah. if she's putting you in the friend category then damn it you're so, gonna treat her like a friend and network with her friends yeah and network with her friends See, here's my strategy for escaping the friend zone okay just fucking disappear oh man like and i'm saying if you want i'm saying if you actually want a chance like if your strategy is actually like i actually want to try to get with this girl mm-hmm and you're you're not forfeiting. You're not like fuck it. I'll be your friend and like see what's up with her friends or just see if she's, you know or I'll just give up or whatever. You're like you know what? I actually want to win. There's nothing you could do as it is. Mm. You need to like just disappear and just become a completely different person the next time she she sees you. I just don't think you can slowly grow on someone. No, you can't. Not in that way. No, most of the time, you know, they say they say a girl knows, you know, if she wants to, you know, deal with you. Within the first like, deal with you. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like within the first like 15 seconds of meeting mm-hmm. you or something like that. So I mean, once she's made her decision, you know, it's gonna be pretty. And not saying that it can't be changed, but it might be a little harder to change it later on. So don't be afraid to, man. I mean, one of the biggest advice for the friend zone, I'd say, would like what you said, just not necessarily disappear, but just move on. Yes, you know, just I mean, just move on. Why not? And also, <laughs> a lot of times you put yourself there. Yeah. By not being uh, 
somebody who seems like somebody who wants that kind of relationship from the beginning, sort of. Yeah, you can also think about why you even want this person to begin with if she's not feeling you back. <laughs> she might not even realize how dope you are in the first place. So, Dude, it's like, I suffer from that syndrome. Hey, man, that's just you might just be too dope. Oh, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a huge relief <laughs> right I mean, I'm telling you that's what it is so anyway that's gonna do it for us thank you as always for tuning in until next time Drizzle do you have anything you wanna say a ball out that's it that's it that was very simple <laughs> alright we're out of here